Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and what I'm painting today, I thought this was really fun. Um, this is just a little uh, a six by eight canvas. It's a gone painting sign that you could maybe, uh, you know, mount, hang on your door when you're in the studio. You could, or you could write whatever you wanted on it. Um, this was never designed to um, to be really large. I guess you could paint it large. It was designed to be small. But what I'm going to show you today is how to use tape and uh, to not only create an arch, but to also to get straight lines. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how to use uh, a glazing medium. We're going to be using, uh, this is called gloss glazing, glazing medium by Golden. We're going to talk a little bit about that, how to get this water effect. Simple, fast. I wanted to design some simple, fast paintings for you guys to do that were easy to do, but, um, but you could feel really good about when they were done. So the only thing, I always shoot my introductions last. If chances are, if you're watching this, John and I are traveling. And this is some, just some, we wanted to make sure we had, you know, lots of things for you to watch while we were away, not doing the live shows. Um, I did add um, this little flower here and these two at the end. After I finished, I came back because, again, I thought that needed a little bit of, and kind of lightened up something here. But pretty much that's our painting. Um, we're using, and this is important, where I explained where we're getting this, these Paramount canvases. I talk about that in the video. And, the, and what I like to do when I'm painting, if I have a lot of paint out, I can create a lot of little paintings. And so the colors I'm using are yellow, uh, uh, raw umber, uh, purple, um, both thalo blue and ultramarine blue. Um, I don't think I used any cad red medium in this, but I have it on the palette, a little magenta, cad yellow medium, and, and uh, thalo green. So those are pretty much their colors for this. And uh, you want masking, you do not want masking tape. You want artist tape to get these really uh, fun, you know, excellent, clear, clean lines. And I think knowing how to do that will be, you know, just open some more doors and windows. So let's open a door to painting today and let's go painting. And hey, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and share. And comments are nice too. Thank you. Positive ones. Bye. Okay, so what I've got is just a leftover piece of canvas that, um, I don't want to say leftover piece of canvas. These are just little canvas pads that we use, uh, Paramount canvas pads. You see, see me use these all the time on the show. And basically there's 10 canvases to a tablet. And we take our leftover paint and, you know, cover these whenever, you know, if I'm not painting something else. And then I have these as surfaces. I picked a dark blue one for this picture. So I think that will work well for me. And um, I'm going to just take the top of my paint, uh, my, um, uh, here, let's take a T-square and figure out where the sides are going to be here. Probably about, we're going to just do this real systematically. This will be fun. I'll show you a fast way to do this, okay? So we're going to come down here like this. I'm just using a T-square and doing this on each side, about that much on each side. What is that? About um, a thumb's width. How's that? About, what, about an inch? Okay, and you use a T-square, you put the T-square on top of your canvas like this, so that line this up square, and then this line has to be straight. That's how you do it, okay? You've got to leave a little bit of room for the chalk, okay? All right, now I'm going to just put this, it um, uh, just happens to be the width of my uh, tape, and I'm going to just come up here like this and uh, do that. All right, so if you, if you measure down and make sure this is the same on both sides, you should have a pretty good arch, right? So here's my arch like that. I'm going to say there's my arch like this and like this. And uh, there we go. I'm saying that that's, there we go. So that's, I'm going to say that's my arch. Let me just get that in a little bit smaller. And um, that, this is going to be basically the basis for my window here, okay? So I'm going to say here's my window. So this is a very simple painting, all right, just very, very simple. But I thought it might be fun to do it, because something I used to teach, uh, you know, years ago. So it's a fun, fun little painting, and it's an interesting one to paint if you're trying to t t teach someone how to paint, um, uh, you know, wood grain and all that kind of stuff. So let's take a little bit of white and uh, ultramarine blue and maybe a tiny bit of thalo and an angle brush, and I want to just... But you put the paint on and then you just sort of um, dry brush it on here like that and sort of streaks like that. Do you see that? Now well, that's kind of bright. So what can you do if something's a little bright? Well, you could add a little magenta to it 
kind of tone that down a little bit. Or you could add, now this is a color we haven't put out before, because again, this is what I'm doing. I'm just shooting a few videos where I'm using up my leftover paint. Here's burnt umber, but I think I would prefer raw umber. Raw umber will gray any color, you know, will just slightly make it age it. What I'm trying to do is that it'll age any blue you do. So there's a little bit of this raw umber and this phthalo blue and white, right? This will give you a nice age look. It's very interesting, kind of a smoky, smoky color. We'll do the same thing on this side, kind of use the brush like this and let some of the darker background show through. Let me move this and just turn it over like that. And I'm uh, just going to do this like that. Okay. Just suggest that there's this some, some sort of wood grain, right? Then I might take a little bit of purple and blue and just uh, maybe suggest a little bit of wood coming down like this. Just a few little things like that. I'll just turn my timer on. I'm trying to see if I can't do these in fairly uh, short order. Okay, these are like fast little paintings. I think what I want to do now is take a little bit of white and um, thalo blue. And uh, well, that looks like I've got a little bit too much purple there. I don't really want that color. So rather than do anything with that, or that's not a color I want. I might use it later. So I'll come over here and mix a new color. Here's a little thalo and white and a little raw umber. There we go. More white. Let's just come on over here. Now I've got this sort of light sky blue tiny bit of ultramarine blue in that. I'm going to come up here under my arch and just sort of like this. Let me just come up here like this and say here's our try to make this kind of even like that. Here's my sky. Okay. And the thing about you've got to remember about skies is that they're lighter as they get down toward the um, horizon. So one thing about it is if you just uh, just add more white to your paint should come down here like this. So, so I want the darker part of the sky up here. And uh, get in the habit of just wiping your brush off and then just going back and smoothing stuff out. You know, sometimes I don't see people do that and I think I can tell they haven't done it. And, uh, and that's a very ha handy thing to do. Now I've got a little phthalo green and blue and I'm going to just come under here like this and just kind of make this all dark green. Kind of this dark kind of pretty green. Now this is where your your um, this is where your glazing medium can come in very handy. All right, so I've got this dark green, and I've got a little bit of glazing medium on my brush, and I, it's hard to tell because this canvas is, you know, my palette's pretty. Um, uh, well, wow, didn't need anywhere near that much. That'll be good for the next three paintings. I needed a tiny little bit of that. I'm gonna put that with with my green. Okay. Now I'm going to say that this is where my pond ends, right about here, okay? Right, so this is what I'm going to say, and there's my pond. Now if I take a little bit of yellow, here you go, just come across like this, and while this is still wet, I'm going to pull, because this is what your glazing medium does, while this is still wet, you take your brush and you pull some brush strokes down like this. Let's take a little bit of phthalo blue and white. Um, pull some brush strokes down like this. Okay, and maybe a little bit more, uh, let's make a lighter green somewhere, add a little bit of yellow to it. This is, okay, so we just, this is our murky pond, okay? Pulling everything down, and because this is still wet, it's that, that glazing medium is going to keep it wet for you, okay? So are you going really, that, yeah, absolutely will. All right, so now I'm going to come back down into here with my dark colors, and just kind of maybe come across here like this. I want this kind of dark down here. Okay, I'm going to leave a little bit of white. And remember, my brush is dirty. I haven't rinsed it. So is this white? Not really. I'm going to come across here like this with a little bit of white. Do a couple of fast slashes. There. Now, you, I want it still wet when I do that. So it's a little bit murkier. Okay. Now this is probably dry enough, but I don't know. So this brush is too dirty to try to do anything with clouds. All right. So I'm going to take another brush, just a little bright brush like this. I'm going to come up with some white, and I want some clouds up here like that. Dry brush, nothing on it. And I'm just going to push some clouds up in this area like that. Okay, just just a little bit. This is just still slightly tacky, but not too much. All right. Now what we do is we dry it. Okay, now this is the trick. We dry everything.
All right, let's dry. So now what? I mean, this is a fun, I think this is a fun painting. I think sometimes you think you have to spend a lot of time painting something. These are paintings you can do under a few minutes, right? So we're going to take some dark green now with some ultramarine blue and, uh, and uh, phthalo green, right? And come up here like this and make some trees. Kind of creep it up into the sky a little bit, maybe a little bit of uh, more ultramarine blue. I'm just going to come up here and say, get some different bushes. Don't make stalactites. Maybe this is a bush up here like that. Use the tip of your brush. Kind of say that's a different bush than this one. Here, maybe you just need to tap out the outline. Okay, I'll just say here's our dark green trees right here. Okay, now what happens? All right, so those are your dark green trees. Um, I've dried this, so I might come under this line right here and just do a little shadow there. Right like that, okay, under that line right there. Maybe I need to pull a little dark here where I, I lost some dark. So this would be the time to get my dark colors in order down here in case I've lost any. You're going, what do you mean you lost them? Well, I mean, in case they kind of disappeared. Now, I might take a little bit of yellow, and I think on this canvas, whoops, this canvas I had out some magenta. Those are some colors I have. I like yellow and magenta because it makes sort of a Indian... Um, Indian yellow, so um, kind of an Indian yellow. It's really pretty, kind of a Indian yellow. And if you have a little blue with that, then you've got this sort of moss green. And I'm going to just tap. I'm going to say the light's coming from this side. So we're going to always, before you start a painting, you guys, figure out your light source. Figure out, now I'm just going to move that over here like that. These are these. Let's put a little bit more magenta in that color. It's a little bit bright. A little bit more yellow like that. Okay, so there's some, I'm going to say here's some bushes that are catching the light a little bit somewhere like this. Okay, nothing too crazy. And then here's some, you know, smaller bushes growing down here like that. We're not doing anything too crazy. Yeah, everybody's with me? No craziness? Okay. So then I'm going to just take um, uh, some of this yellow and uh, just the same color I used on that and just kind of go back and forth down in here in the pond just across this a little bit like that, okay? And then if I put some white with that same color, uh, we got kind of this beige color and there's the inside. This is the inside of my uh, arch. I'm going to paint that in there like that. Maybe I'll expand it a little bit. If uh, you do, someone said, well, I want to do this bigger, how would I make it bigger? Well, you're just going to have to find, find a lid to us, um, maybe a, a frying pan or something, or saucepan, something with a nice circle on it you can use as an, as an arch template. A little bit of this with it. All right, let's just, okay. All right, so there's that, and then I'm going to say that this is my, all right, so I'm saying there's my arch like that. And then I think what I want is a little bit of a light line across here like this. Okay, so far so good. And I think we'll take a little bit of, um, do we have any yellow left? Isn't that funny? I'm just, my yellow is all gone, but I'm just going to just take a little yellow and um, cad red medium and make a, like a little orange color with a tiny bit of purple in it. Make kind of a brown color. And I'm going to just say that I'm going to have some boards going across here like this at the bottom. Let's say these are my boards for my wall. Okay, and then I'll put a little bit of, um, now this is kind of backwards, I'm going to put a little bit of the blue on top of them. If I had any blue left, do I have any blue left? Here's some blue. Okay, there we go. Just Okay, so I want to say that there's my there's my boards that are going across the bottom like this of my window, right? Not talking too much about those. Um, here's a little bit of a light kind of here like this. Where did I get this brush? This brush is really old. Okay, like that. All right, so we're saying that's what happened there, okay? So um, I'm not totally happy with that yet, but it'll work for now. So here's a little yellow and red. I need a little orange color, right? So um, 
there. I need. I just need a little bit of light, like a little bit of light coming straight down here like that on both sides. Kind of frame in my window. Okay. Yeah, you could tape this if you wanted. If you wanted to have this a little more precise, you could go ahead and tape it, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. So, all right, and then we'll just put a little bit of this gold color on our wood here. Here, let's just have a little, uh, like that. There we go. That's what we needed. And then I'm going to make that a little bit lighter. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now what? Well, you've got some, we have some white here, so let's put in a few little um, flowers like this uh, 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 are on our pond. Here we go. Now the front ones are bigger and the back ones get smaller. They're little. They can't have a big flower back there. You have to use perspective and everything. This brush is going in the trash. It, it, it gets about two brush strokes and if I can't, it's, a, it's worn out. It's gone. That one's going in the trash too. People always say, how do you, how many brushes do you go through? I go through enough, but one thing about it, when I start making brush strokes and they're not doing what I want, then they're gone, okay? So here we go. Here we go. Here's our big, our biggest ones, right? And a little one behind it. Okay, like that. And, um, let's see, this is a little bigger brush than I want, but here's a teeny one right there. Is this still wet? Maybe we should dry it. Let's just take a second and dry this. Not YouTube. I'm sorry. If they're watching this video, of course they're watching the video. <laughs> How else would they even know? All right, start again, start again, start again. All right, sure, okay, start again, all right? Wait. Take 900, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Ginger Cook, and as John pointed out just a minute ago behind the camera, that if you're watching this video, of course you're watching the video, so rather than say that, I just want to say, if you happen to be on YouTube and you're seeing me now, which of course you are, you wouldn't be seeing me, <laughs> did you know we have on Facebook the best painting club ever. It's called the Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club and we've opened the doors for new members. And why do you want to join? Well, it's free. That's fun. Two, you can get um, help with your artwork on Wednesdays if you've got something you're working on, some painting, and you want the, some really lovely artists because we have a big group. And if you put up the capital letter CC in your comments on your under your, your description, you, you'll be amazed at the, uh, the help that you can get from all these other acrylic artists. And guess what? If it isn't love, if it isn't kindness, if somebody doesn't have something nice to say, they don't say it. Uh, we've had our members say this is the kindest, nicest place to be. Um, we think you're going to like it. Also, if you kind of want to know what John and I are up to, this is the place where we post some of our uh, videos. We also are going to start be doing live videos um, uh, just for our Facebook Club members and kind of give you the heads up on what's going on. So this is the group to be in. Come join us at Ginger Cook Live Acrylic Painting Club on Facebook. Alright, so where's my titanium white go? What's this one? This is um, titanium titanium white. I need some clean white, you guys. There we go. So, back to the corner using just the corner of this brush. We've dried that. A little bit of white. Okay, and then when you go further back, right, I mean, you barely see these. These are really tiny. Like that. Just a couple. Don't do too many. Just a couple. Um, Like that. So there's a couple of these. Now, one thing you can do is if you um, add a little bit of a yellow center. Let's see if that wasn't yellow. Let's try a little yellow center here. And oh, that was a red center. I really wanted a yellow center. Must have had some other color on the brush. Okay, on these, right? And then I will. I like to come under with some green. If I get them too big, I like to come under with some green and just make them smaller. Okay. So that's easy enough to do. If you get your flower too big, just um, 
just put a little green underneath them. I don't want that one smaller, and that's just the easiest thing in the world to do if you can't get them as little as you want, okay? And then you'll just take a little bit of the light green here and do this. Fast little lily pond. I want some of this green coming down here like that. That's pretty. Um, I just kind of like that green in this painting, this kind of brighter green. And uh, uh, sometimes it's nice to just kind of redo the shoreline like that. And uh, let's see what else we got. All right, so that's pretty. That's pretty. Um, it's pretty easy. Now we dried everything now. So now I think I'll come back and um, just using the tape, I think I'll come back and just straighten my boards up or my border up around here. So let's try this one more time. Okay, now I'm just using my um, uh, quarter inch tape, and I think I want my, just going to come right now here like that, so I want this about this wide, okay, I'll do the same thing on the other side, open the tape up, and let's get that brush out of the way. I'm going to come in here like this, and so this is going to be the inside of that. Here's the outside. Pretty much that looks about right. Looks about the same on both sides. So let's take a little bit of white paint and that sort of beigey color. Put a little purple and yellow together, make a pretty good beigey color. You can put a little bit of, that's kind of this off-white. There you go. All right, let's see how we did with that. I think we did pretty good, don't you? That one we didn't do so good with. And why is that? Well, because we didn't smush that tape down. If this happens to you, this is because when you did it, you didn't uh, smudge the tape down. And that means to really, uh, really smush that tape down, either with a knife or something. And you can see where I didn't do that. And so now I've got this extra uh, glob of paint, in which I'm now looking for a palette knife to scrape that off with. So what do I got? Anything in here with a palette knife? Hmm. No, well, here's the back of a brush. Can't find a palette knife. I'm just going to... All right, so I'm going to just... Um, I can't do anything about that. So what I will do is I will dry it, and then I will tape next to it, and I'll show you that. This is good, all right? Okay, so I've I've dried that, and I'm going to put the tape right next to it, where I, you know, kind of where the edge is kind of uneven, right? Now, when I talk about that, I'm going to either use my fingernail or a metal object or something to smush that down. You don't. You want a really damp, an undamp brush. You've got to really take. Make sure you don't have paint on the brush. I'll come back with some of this um, blue color of our um, with a little rumber in it of our uh, boards, right? And just paint that out like that, okay? So don't fear if it isn't perfect, you know what I mean? You can fix it, right? I mean, look at that. I mean, that we pretty much fixed that. And um, again, this is just something that can be done. And they even have tape. They have something called crepe tape. I'm not going to use it today, but they even have tape that will go around an arch for those of you who are just... You know, want to make sure that you've got your arch just the way you want it, right? Like that. 
There you go. Okay. So there's our arch. And let's um let's just go ahead and tape the top of this too. I, I say let's do that too. As long as we're we're doing that, let's just do this. Does that look pretty level? And this and just tape that too. Like that. Now you gotta um, you gotta squish it down, but I'm gonna say that this is this there we go. Gonna tape that too, and I don't think I had a lot of paint on there, but that's okay. Alright, so now what do we got? All right, so that's that's how you can use tape to make a window. Now, what I did on this one, which I thought was really cute, I hope you like it too, which I think is really fun, is what I did on this was, was I used the tape in kind of a different way than you would expect. Okay. So it's all dry. I think I can use two pieces. Let's just put the brush down. All right, so I've got this little square that I'm making, like about like that. Okay, now this ha these edges have to be so smooshed down. The term is burnishing, but I think smooshed is exactly what I mean. When I say smoosh that down. Then you're gonna take some white paint and some yellow, which I'm out of yellow. I think I have enough yellow for this, right? It's a very, very light yellow. I'm gonna come up here like this. Try not to ever push paint under a tape. Try to always get it where your brush is coming the other opposite direction, okay? You know, try to just, this is what you see me doing here, right? And, um, all right, now I'm going to dry that. Hi, this is Ginger Cook. If you're enjoying this uh, video on YouTube, then perhaps you might want to experience what it would be like to have me look at your painting and make some fabulous comments or even some suggestions. Maybe some of the videos that we put up are not totally beginner on YouTube and you might feel like they're a little out of your depth. If, or maybe you just like some advice on how you could make what you've painted, which you think is great, even better. And how you get that to happen and how I can see your artwork what is to get take advantage of our personal art coaching for a month. Try us for a month on our website, gingercooklive.gallery, where we take personal art coaching to the next level with video art coaching. And you can hear more about it on our website. Okay. So let's take off the tape. Okay, it's gone. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take a small brush. Oh, I forgot. I didn't do this right. I forgot. Sorry, I can fix it. I've dried it, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to cut this off right here with dark blue. Do I have any ultramarine blue out? No, it's all dried up. Okay. Probably need to just retire this palette. But here we go. I'm going to just right here like this. Next to here. Now, uh, here's the gold color. Like that. Here's the light blue color. Where's that? Some lighter blue. Uh, yeah, let's just... 
think we didn't put the raw umber in it. That's what burnt. Here's raw. Tell you what, when you use up all the paint, you've really got to put some out or you won't match the colors. All right, so here's my dark color again. Well, it's pretty dark under here. All right, now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to dry that. Okay. Now, using just, I'll put some more yellow paint out because I'm out. Um, I'll put a little yellow and a tiny bit of purple together. Make a slightly darker color. You don't need much. I can have a little tiny bite white with it. And I'm going to come up here like this and make a triangle like this and that from those two corners. Okay. Maybe make it slightly lighter than that, but not much. Okay. You with me? And then I'm going to take a little dot like this right up here in the corner. All right, so now what, what do we have? Now we're going to dry this, okay? And then what you want to do is let's take a little bit of raw umber into that purple color that we made, right? Now we want a little shadow on this right under here like this, a little bit darker. I need a darker shadow. Just barely, you barely see it, but you need a darker shadow under this, right here where that post-it, little post-it note is, and just put a little shadow right there like that, okay? So there's our little shadow under there, and I'm going to put a little shadow next to this side too, a um, little bit of blue here, right next to here too, gets a little bit of a shadow. Okay, so far so good. Let's just pull something down here like that. Now, what what I thought was fun about this was uh, um, what I had done and designed, and I think it's just, you know, kind of nice. All right, if I can find a... See, I need a different color pen probably. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll use... I would like a brown pen, but I don't have a brown pen sitting here. Uh, we have two studios we film in, and... You either have them or you don't. Well, here's a brown Sharpie. That'll work. Okay. And I'm going to write gone. And then gone painting on my note. And I think as long as I'm doing that, I'll just underline that right there like that. Ooh, maybe a little darker than I wanted. Maybe you shouldn't do that. All right. So that's a, there you go. That's our um, kind of looking through this window. It's and uh, looking out at this um, beautiful landscape. And uh, we've gone painting. We're not, uh, we're not home for anybody. Okay. It's just kind of take that off of there like that all right so there you guys there you have it I'm gonna lighten that up right there where it flipped over um, that's going to be our uh, uh, painting for the day and if you want to you can come up here with a you know darken this under the arch darken it along here like this and you can use your ruler or not. Tried to keep this fairly simple as far as, uh, you know, just this nice little, um, nice little window with a, with a pond, um, some water, 
some trees, some um, some clouds, right? You know, just a few little clouds. And if you want to put a few little more up here now that it's... There we go. Just a second little layer of clouds here to kind of brighten that up. And here's your little flowers. And again, we didn't we didn't do these. Uh, we weren't too. Uh, we th these were not supposed to be perfect. You know, we just suggested some. We just suggested some flowers in this lily lily uh, pond just by um, tiny little brush strokes and kind of off white flowers. There you go, like that, something like that. So. Anyway, I hope you had fun painting this. Let me just show you what this. Let me flip this over now and show you what that looks like finished. Um, and if you want to finish the wood a little more or make this bigger, you could. But I thought this would be a fun paint, you know, fun little thing to do on a size size side like this. You know, you can, um, uh, you know, maybe just don't want to post that on your studio door when you're not home or when you don't want to be disturbed. Um, you're just going to say you've gone painting, and I think that that's a perfectly good explanation of where you where you are you don't have to explain it to anybody they can go oh and uh, who knows maybe you'll find a magical spot like that to go painting with but i thought uh, let me just lighten this uh crossed here like that i thought i would want to lighten this this year a little bright let's just tone that one back you a little bit big all right we just really don't want to see too much of these flowers we've got one two three four five and um, if you do any of the ones in the background if they were off white that would be better okay so if you said that there was one here if it was off white that definitely would be better and i don't know why we have any white there i think it came off my hand there you go so there we go just a couple little lines going like this. The lines like this suggest it's a pond. You just don't want to get them too far back. So there's my gone gone painting. Um, and um, how cool is that? I mean, I think that's really fun. And, and now the thing about a Sharpie is that they're not, they may not be uh, permanent. It says it's a permanent marker, but sometimes that's why I prefer Posca pen because they do, when they dry, they are, they are, definitely are, um, uh, they definitely are um, waterproof where this one may or may not be you know because of you know because I use that um, let's try it and see do you want to should we do the last minute test and see so probably what I would do for that is I would take a little glazing medium and a very, very soft brush. Here's just a little glazing medium, no paint on it, right? And I might just very gently go over this, um, try not to um, smear it and seal that. Um, I'm going to, that'll seal that, um, that Sharpie there. Might push it back. And when that dries, that well, if I don't touch it too much, that should, uh, that should seal that in there. So if you were worried about, you know, what you could, do to put that on there. Now, here's another thing you can do with this um, glazing medium if you want your pond to be a bit um, uh, more glossy too. You can put a little of that on here too. Just follow the brush strokes, just right over it, clear like that. And can kind of when you then when you go to varnish it, this will seem slightly glossier than the other stuff. There's your water kind of opening up. Like that. So anyway, just a thought. I hope you guys had fun doing this. Um, if you're enjoying this, our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Um, uh, we appreciate it, and tell everybody about it. You know, I've got this nifty uh, Facebook club, the uh, Ginger Cook Acrylic Painting Club. Some of the nicest people you'll ever want to meet are our members, and we do. Um, we they can show us. Everybody said, "How can I show you my artwork?" And that's one of the best ways you can. Show, you know, show me your artwork is uh, become a member of our acrylic painting club and then you can post your artwork uh, during the week and we can see what you've been painting from our tutorials. So I hope you've enjoyed it and have fun. Have a wonderful day today, you guys. And I, I liked, I'm gone painting. <laughs>